Welcome to the Food Too Good to Waste project. Today, we're bringing you a podcast. So listen closely to the stories that these carbon atoms tell about their travels through the carbon cycle. You know, the geosphere, that's the Earth's crust, the atmosphere, which is the air, the hydrosphere, the water, and the living biosphere where all life exists. As we begin, two carbon atoms meet up in a garden. Hi, it's Katie, isn't it? How's it going? Stan, it is you. <laughs> it's been a couple thousand years or so. And you know what? It's going really great for me. How about you? I can honestly say that this last adventure was one of my best trips yet. No kidding. You know, this garden's a happening place. So many of us carbon atoms hanging out in the geosphere really feels homey. You know, with all these plants rescuing us from the atmosphere and fixing us up here in the soil with our pals, then of course the absorbers back up, but you know, we combine with some other atoms and become nutrients. And then those plants just compost in place and the bacteria release us as individuals right back into the soil to hang out with our pals again. Carbon atom could start a lot of great adventures from here though. You sure could do a lot worse. There are some really long, boring trips we can cycle through outside of the geosphere. Like when I got caught up with two hydrogen atoms and three oxygen atoms in the ocean, we hung out as carbonic acid and drifted to the deepest part of the ocean. We were so tightly bonded, it seemed like forever. Those guys were boring. All they wanted to do was upset the pH of the whole ocean and the ecosystems and stay in the hydrosphere forever. Yeah, yeah. talk about ho-hum. You know, like those 300 million years I spent trapped in a coal deposit. It started out in a fun way. There was a whole bunch of dinosaurs. I remember this one time I was part of a nutrient that got absorbed by a plant that got eaten by a stegosaurus. I love that. And then the stegosaurus got eaten by a T-Rex. I hung out, you know, as part of a bone cell in that T-Rex until it died. But before I could decompose, a flying pterosaur ate the T-Rex and me right along with it. Now that was fun, but of course, you know, I miss hanging out in the geosphere with all my other carbon buddies. But once I got down in that coal pit, well, that was a long time to be hanging out. Yeah, a lot of pressure too, I hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was a weird one. One time I got washed out into the ocean. I was just floating along when I got absorbed by an algae that ended up getting trapped in a slimy dark lake of oil under the bottom of the ocean. That was a sticky situation. It gets better. The oil finally leaked out of the ocean bottom and formed a rainbow slick on the surface of the ocean, which got struck by lightning. You can imagine the fire that that caused. Wow. The poor little algae was completely burned up but just as I was getting freed up by the fire, a couple of oxygen atoms bonded with me, dragged me into the atmosphere in the smoke. I was part of a free floating CO2 molecule. Those oxygens are big and strong and so grabby. I mean, they'll bond with just about anything. They really hold on tight to your electrons and boy, they can sure be a drag. You are so right, Katie. So the three of us bobbed around in the air reflecting heat energy back down to the earth. That was fun. For a while, just when I was getting really tired of their dumb oxygen jokes, a wind came along and blew us inland. There we were absorbed by a leaf that was growing on a new sprouting plant last spring. The leaf we were in had good exposure to sunlight, so photosynthesis was happening a lot. That broke up my little bonding party with the oxygen and they headed out to the atmosphere. I was made into sweet plant sap. I was sent down the stem to the roots and I thought I might be part of a stem or a root, but I got squeezed out into the soil. It took a while for me to get my bearings, but with starting as a gas in the morning, being captured by a leaf, stripped bare by photosynthesis, and then built into a liquid, and that afternoon finding myself in the soil, did you ever get squeezed out of a root tip, Katie? Oh, yeah, I did. But go on. I want to hear what happened. I mean, living things, these are some of the best adventures you can have. So when I finally got my bearings underground, I noticed there was so much life going on right at the edge of the plant root. It was like Mardi Gras. I got eaten and pooped out 
15 times in a row by 15 different organisms. I had a lot of chemistry with those fellows, man. Finally, things settled down a little when I joined up as part of a long chain of carbon atoms. It was like a conga line in the soil. I think they call it humus. Somebody told me that we had been mineralized. I'm not sure what that means, but it was a metal place. So many carbons so close together. That's when the mole found me and kicked me back up to here while tunneling through the ground. I'm glad to be back on the surface now and especially in this garden soil. Too much partying can be exhausting and I definitely had enough of being eaten and pooped out. But that was a great sequence. It sure beat being locked underground somewhere. Yeah, or stuck in the ocean. So I agree that hanging out in the soil of the geosphere, you know, that's, that's my favorite too. I feel like we're part of the earth's great treasure chest of nutrients. I mean, we're the building blocks of all organic cells. I especially like this spot because right here in this garden stand, there is rich soil with a lot of compost and organic matter that's transformed into humus. Mm, yeah. And we are put to good use as part of this soil. I mean, we can be absorbed by fungi, plants, microorganisms. I mean, I love it when I get to bond with other atoms to become molecules that make up these nutrients. I especially like when the plant I'm in is being eaten by one of those four stomach raisers like a buffalo. Talk about strange chemistry. I mean, you get chewed and swallowed and burped up and chewed again. Oh, <laughs> kind of reminds me of a wave pool, you know? <laughs> wow. Quite interesting. Uh, sometimes when I'm part of a nutrient though, I get eaten by a bird. And that's when I get to travel to so many new places. I mean, that only lasts until the nutrient I mean, gets broken down. But by then, you know, my energy's all used up. I'm exhausted and pooped out. And then it's back to the ground or the water to be decomposed into my good old carbon element self. Well, I agree. Here in this complex of humus and soil, I can really relax and soak up some water. I find that I can hold eight times my weight in rainwater. I love being bloated. <laughs> I feel like I can really help out the plants who get thirsty and I can help keep those rivers from overflowing so much. Wait, what just happened? Katie, we're both in the water. Whoa, what? Check out those little aquatic critters jumping and diving around us. Oh, oh, that paramecium is getting a little too close. I'm not ready to be absorbed yet. It's fun to be all around in this life. So Katie, what do you want on your next adventure? Well, as soon as this water recedes a little bit, I'm hoping I'm gonna get sucked up by a sweet little tomato root. And then I wanna travel all the way up to the top of the tomato vine and get turned into the skin of a tomato. Do you know how long it's been since I've had a good tan? Mm, yeah, um, sounds good. Thinking after that, I hope I'll get picked and taken maybe into the kitchen and they'll make the tomato I'm a part of into a delicious sauce or maybe, maybe salsa. Of course, if, if I'm part of the skin, I'll get thrown into the compost pile. Then I'll spend, you know what, I'll spend the winter in the compost pile with a bunch of my nutrient friends while all those microorganisms and bacteria decompose the tomato skin. And that should take about all winter since it won't be warm enough for them to work very fast, but they will generate enough thermal energy from their decomposing work to keep me nice and toasty. And by spring, I will be a chunk of compost ready to go on another trip with a tan and rest it up all winter. I mean, anything can happen, but I will most likely get absorbed up by a seedling, you know, a baby plant. I bet you can't top that trip, Stan, even with your imagination. Well, that does sound really sweet. I want to be eaten by a human. Maybe some of that salsa digested <laughs> and turned into blood sugar. That happened to me once before. I was having so much fun zipping through the blood vessels like the best water slide ever with a pulse behind me, man, boom, boom, boom. it was amazing. Wow. I was starting to get a little bit queasy when I took a smaller side vessel through the brain. Man, the brain is amazing. It's like being in a giant control room with lightning bolts of thoughts flying all around. It's truly the most exciting ride I have ever been on. It went by so quick. I got metabolized and sweated out right out through the skin 
And you know what happened next? <laughs> I was soaked up and washed off down through <laughs> the drain into the wastewater. But I want to experience that ride again. That brain was so, so amazing. That sounds so, so exciting. Super exciting, Stan. But, you know, I'm really ready for a restful time in the compost pile. Kind of like the difference between going to the beach or hang gliding. That's what we're thinking about. I'm ready for the beach. Well, Katie, it's been great catching up with you this time. I hope to meet up with you again soon. Hear about your adventures. Compare notes. It's not like we've taken all the great paths we can take yet anyway, especially here in this garden. Sounds like a plan, Stan, but kind of depends on which way the wind blows and the water flows, if you know what I mean. Whoa, whoa, watch out, Stan. Here comes that paramecium again. Whoa, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Me, whoa. Catch you later. Bye, catch you later. Bye.